Now, Ralph Story continues his series on the secrets of Beverly Hills. Tonight, Ralph talks about money and how it has really moved around in Beverly Hills. I think it's fabulous. Kind of golden ghetto. I mean, I don't like walking down Rodale Drive and seeing all these Gucci purses. And... But I do like the sweets of life. There's a lot of money coming from all over the world. You know, you can't help it. If you listen to Johnny Carson, I've heard him say, well, when we go on Rodale Drive, you got to put Kruger Rams in the... Uh, in the Rodale Drive parking meters. Beverly Hills, California, a little island of money surrounded by envy. And the money starts moving early in the morning. Fast Very active. At 7 o'clock in the long green park called Beverly Gardens, the dawn joggers cross paths with the first commuters. The donut wagons meet the daily domestics before they meet the lady of the house, and Beverly Hills 760 gardeners begin the shearing of the green. A hundred thousand people are coming to work in Beverly Hills today. Money is their main business, and they're going to move it around. It's not money that has just come in. It's, it's been here for 50, 60, 75 years. Money is not important. A million dollars doesn't mean anything here anymore. We have an influx of uh, foreign money coming into the city. I think that the influx of foreign money has really changed Beverly Hills a lot. A lot of it is Good has or been, bad? I think it, to a degree it's been very harmful because a lot of it's been taken out of the local merchant's hands and it's not a city that's controlled by its inhabitants anymore. What made this country originally was foreign money. Let's not forget that. It's the foreigners who came here with either money or skills. All the Arabs are going to buy it, and uh, <laughs> they've taken over Beverly Hills. Like it or not, Beverly Hills has become an international city with foreign capital and foreign capitalists, foreign merchandise, and foreign languages. You can walk down Rodeo Drive or Beverly and hear every language you ever thought of. When I first came here, it was, uh, you know, like a village, which I loved. But now it's kind of international. All the people from all over the world will come here. Why not? That's the way the country grew. <coughs> but the only thing is, is the control. Hernando Cartwright is the man behind the legend, most responsible for the magnetism of Beverly Hills. El Padrino, they called him when he took over the Beverly Hills Hotel. It looked like a Spanish fortress looming over an empty development. Now it hides behind the greenery, the reclusive retreat of tidal tycoons, and it's still pink stucco. It's not stucco painted pink. And those $500 a day cottages are where Fairbanks met Pickford, and it all began. But the man and his magic moved on to the Beverly Wiltshire Hotel. And with a cartel of celebrities built a pool that's a replica of Sophia Loren's, and the kind of hostelry where Prince Charles, Emperor Hirohito, and Warren Beatty hang out. Of course, you may prefer the Beverly Vista for $15 a night, and the Crescent and the Del Flores may be even less. We promote because we want a lot of tourism, so Beverly Hills is known throughout uh, almost every country. The tourist industry has exceeded Beverly Hills' uh, capacity to deal with it and still take into account the needs of its residents. Most of the people you see now shopping on Rodeo are tourists. It is a happening again. It's an event. It's one of the rare streets that overnight became uh, famous. Prices are kind of way out of line. I don't go on Rodeo Drive. Sometimes they have some fun, you know, looking at all the tourists and the stores and stuff. But I don't, I would never shop on Rodeo Drive. I love what's happening to Rodeo Drive. It is evolving, if it has not already evolved, into one of the great streets of the world. And it is progress, and you can't hold back <laughs> progress. One of the pillars of the Rodeo Drive Association is Fred Heyman. Fred Heyman is Giorgio's, an elegant emporium of clothes, and Fred likes what's happening to Rodeo Drive. You can't have a famous street and preclude tourism. It's unrealistic. Also, tourism brings activity. Activity brings business. Nothing succeeds like success. But up the street is a store so successful it's closed and locked, open by appointment only. Bijan Paksad came from Iran long before the Shah to open the world's most expensive men's store. He serves just six customers a day, but only kings, no cabbages. Design of mine are uh, uh, very delicate, very expensive, and need a lot of appreciation. And because people paying that type of money for that type of clothing, 
I do believe service is very important to them. To get these pictures, our camera tripod rested on a $75,000 Persian rug. It's all just too much, even for Rodeo Drive. I wish he'd move off the street. Mr. Bijan is on a salary. And he's got rotten values and has done a rotten, rotten thing. Mr. Bijan represents several uh, wealthy men that are, have made a big investment in Beverly Hills. But big investments and soaring prices and rising rents are fracturing the facade of Beverly Hills. It used to be a neighborhood kind of thing with hardware stores and key shops and the, now that the leases come due, the rents go up and they leave. Newberries is gone, Cease Candy is gone. Uh, other than thrifties, they can't buy an ice cream cone for less than a dollar. Why it's gotten so bad, Esther Garber has opened a discount store for cashmere and silk, but it has it hasn't been easy. Gucci's is very mad. Everybody's very mad at me on Rodale, but what can I do? I, I haven't undercut them. I'm just doing my thing and they're doing their thing. And, and if we've done anything, we've really brought a bigger influx of people here into Beverly Hills. Traffic is miserable. Parking is impossible here. Parking situation in Beverly Hills, I think, so the birds. There's a lot more parking in Beverly Hills than people realize. Our parking problems are, are bad. Traffic is worse. Anyway, good luck with your Beverly Hills parking. Take money and don't call them meter maids. They're parquettes. The fines they collect bring in a million dollars a year, including the two tickets we got while making this report. And Connie, I just thought I'd show you the last car to drive into Beverly Hills that didn't have a parking problem. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Okay, more T tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to talk about real estate and the fact that you can actually be a prisoner in a million dollar mansion. Oh, I can't believe it.